If you were to be asked to name the religions that practice in the UK, you might well say Christianity, Islam, Judaism and Hinduism, but uh, perhaps after that you might struggle. Do the less well-supported religions get drowned out now? Should all our religions be given equal status? Today, a new pope will be enthroned to oversee a congregation of millions. It's not the Roman Catholic Church we're talking about, but the Christian Coptic Orthodox Church. Worldwide, there are 16 million Coptic Christians with a large population in Egypt. Here in the United Kingdom, little attention will be paid to the appointment, leading some to suggest we have too insular an attitude towards religion. Many members of minority or new religions feel they're not taken as seriously as more established religions. Minority and spiritual movements such as Druidism and Scientology can be the butt of jokes and even derision. But as many secularists criticize established faiths for failing to modernize, shouldn't we give smaller religions more consideration? And doesn't cherry-picking over beliefs run the risk of destabilizing the notion of religion as a whole? Members of established faiths argue a true religion is one that has stood the test of history and is based on the teachings of God or a prophet. They claim some of these new groups don't deserve to be called religions and actually dilute the power of what they deem as a true religion. In the 2001 UK census, almost 400,000 people listed their religion as Jedi Knight, making it the fourth biggest belief in the country. But does that make it a faith? So in a modern world, should we embrace new and minority religions and treat them as equal to traditional faiths? Or should all believers unite under the traditional message of God? What do you think? You can join in by phone, text, email or online. Let's bring in um, well, Bishop Lowe first of all. How inclusive and embracing should we be of all new religions? Well, if you think I'm going to support Jedi Knights as being a religion, uh, you're wrong. I think it was a, 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 a natural humorous <laughs> response to a rather daft census question. Um, some religions, inverted commas, are dangerous. Uh, there are cults around and we must be very wary of people getting caught up in things that actually do real harm to them. Uh, and we can mention some, but I, I think I better be careful about the BBC's lawyers before I start going down I that road. I would appreciate that. <laughs> yes, your uh, but, definition but, of a cult, obviously not somebody else's. Somebody else's, else's but, but there, there, there are, uh, and there are organisations which will help advise people about some of the dangers of some of those religions. And for example, the Church of Scientology has a lot of criticism uh, uh, about itself. Uh, and, you know, some of its beliefs. Um, I personally have got reservations about Pre President Romney's particular faith. Uh, my own view is that it is the major historic religions which, uh, and the cops are part of that. I was interested in your film mentioned there. They are a major historic part of the Christian faith. So age for you is... is, is uh, the age based on scripture, based on, in a sense, the validation of a community of people worshipping God, as far as I'm concerned, a common God, not, you know, different gods. So if the Jedi Knights still exist in, in a few hundred years' time, would they be more acceptable? No, because I don't actually have any sense the Jedi Knights believe in any sort of God. They believe or in a greater other. force of nature, yeah. but they're not here to have a chat <laughs> with us, so we might move on. Uh, Kishwa and, and Patricia, Kishwa first. Yeah, well, I completely disagree with the bishop on the grounds that I think religion is a completely private thing. It is a pact between you and your God, if, if you happen to be religious or spiritual, and therefore the, the concept of equal status or no status does not apply because you should really be having to be able to keep your religion private off, uh, you know, fr away from the larger community. That is, for me, a real religion where, you know, it, it, it sort of demonstrates itself in the way you live, in the way you act towards other people. So that's a different matter altogether because I feel that everything he has said, you know, about uh, people worshipping a particular god, a particular, you know, all, all the criteria that he has set down for the things which should be accepted uh, as against those that should not be accepted uh, could be destroyed as you said tomorrow you know because uh, as religions develop over the years what, what we consider to be a cult today may be a major religion so tomorrow Patricia, so we don't know should all yeah. religions large or small be able to, to have a peaceful coexistence and acceptance of each other well 
can I just begin by saying, first of all, I disagree with both <laughs> the previous speakers. I'd like to bring some theological intelligence to bear here because this is a difficult subject and people do scream bigotry and intolerance the minute you raise certain issues. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me um, to, to find out that you know, God became man 2,000 years ago um, the only religion with, uh, you know, whose founder claimed to be God um, <clears throat> left us with clear instructions, clear hierarchical church, and then went back to heaven and said, well, it really doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're all trying to be nice people. There were nice people on earth before Christ came, so it's got to be more than that. So what would you the say Catholic to Hindus, Muslims? Well, these, these are pre... Well, well, not Muslim, but Hinduism, pre-Christian. But uh, there were obviously lots of... Excuse me using this term, but this is a term that, that has always been used. Pagan religions, religions that do not adhere to Christ. Um, and uh, Islam came what, six or seven hundred centuries after Christ. It just beggars belief that God would send the angel Gabriel to a Virgin Mary to tell her that she's to be the mother of the Messiah and all that we know come after it. And then 700 years later, he sent the same angel to the prophet Muhammad, as the, the Muslims describe him, and give him a completely different a set of um, you know, rules and whatever. So it doesn't make any theological sense, Kate. Either, either the Christian... as, as um, the, the Christ, Christianity is true in its original, not in its liberal format. So there's no room for Islam in your book. I, I'm just trying no, to understand what your Christianity. Christianity is an absolute. You know, it's God has, is Christ is God, and, and Christ founded the church. Therefore, it doesn't seem to make sense to me. Um, that Christ left a whole sacramental system, a hierarchical structure. Can, can I just interrupt? Um, you know, and, then, because, uh, and then just said, well, it really doesn't matter what... They, since, since I've been just sort of told I belong to a pagan religion. But apart from that, what I'd like to say is, the whole question of giving equal status, that's the problem with, with that uh, sort of thing which you've set out. Because then it, it is a question of competition. You know, my religion is better than your religion. Excuse me, can I just finish? Mm -hmm. And as a result of which, what happens is that people begin begin to fight amongst each other. And I think this is a very, very divisive sort of premise which you have put forth, okay. and which is why I am saying me, that yeah. people should be allowed to worship whichever God they want, but in privacy. There is no question of open status or open Let's recognition. Let's open it up. Sheikh yeah. Mohammed Al Husseini is an imam. Uh, you've just heard um, our panelists here discussing, Patricia, only one true religion, if I can paraphrase in, in that sense. Your views? Sure. As a, um as a, first of all, salam, shalom to all the people in the, uh, in the studio. Shalom. As a person who is a consultant for a Christian charity, uh, campaigning in support of uh, persecuted Christian minorities in Muslim countries and has taken a stand against Islamic extremism and bigotry against persecuted Christians, um, I'm rather disappointed to hear some of the views that are expressed in the studio. Uh, first of all, those views don't correspond to the official orthodox teaching of the Catholic Church. Uh, Pope Paul VI uh, promulgated in Nostra Aetate uh, a view expressed in Article 3 that the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, views Muslims with esteem, with respect, and regards Muslims and Christians and Jews as worshipping the one same God. In Article 4, uh, the, the same declaration says that the Church wishes to decry uh, anti-Semitism and prejudice against Jews and, and, uh, and other faiths. Uh, the Catholic, Imam, Church, thank you, the Catholic thank you. Church teaches in Vatican II, dogmatic constitution in the Church, that the Catholic Church is necessary for salvation. And anyone who knows that and refuses to either enter or remain within the Church cannot be saved. And of course we respect people, and I'm really glad you mentioned that point, because respecting people is different from respecting their beliefs. But should we respect... Uh, Re Reverend should Calvin Samuel... It's the same let's... thing. No, how, can, how can you not respect a person and not respect their beliefs? Because if somebody... I mean, that, that, is, that, that is the, well, that is the basic the premise. Well, if I made of green cheese, would you respect Well, that the point Guys, is that I you just, have to... Just, if you respect me, you would respect that no. as well. Let me just okay. go to Reverend Calvin Samuel. I want to bring in... Uh, he was a Methodist minister and theologian. The bigger, more established religions really benefit from the support that they're given from the airtime, from uh, charitable status, tax breaks and so on. Should that be afforded to all religious groups? Hi there, good morning. Two things. First of all, just to echo the previous speaker, I completely disagree with the suggestion that Christianity is the only religion and the only one worth talking about. So that would be worth noting. Uh, second, for me, it's about representation. If you have somebody making up a religion in their garage, which has a, an adherent population of precisely three, 
to suggest that they should have equal status is obviously uh, ludicrous. Um, so what does equal status mean? Does it mean that it should be included in the RE curriculum? Are we going to add JEDI to the RE curriculum? Uh, 400 members in the UK I think is a bit of a joke, uh, and I do mean that literally. I think people feel that as a, as a bit of a joke. But the, second, the third is to say I also disagree with the idea that religion is a private undertaking. The reality is this country is shaped very largely by that Christian background. Uh, it's a country in which we have a commitment to freedom and justice, and that grows out of our Christian background. It's I'm a country afraid I, 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 I'm going to come back to you in the, in, in the studio. No, I will come back to you. Yeah. Uh, let me bring in Garth Christie, because he can pick up on the point of, of um, battling for charitable status, which would give you more of an equal uh, status. You're one of its elders, the Plymouth Brethren. You're one of its elders. You've been actively fighting. Uh, for charity status but how much do you get involved and contribute to society because this is one of the arguments that actually if you're not prepared to do that then why should you be given the same level as, as, as other religions well, that's an interesting question thank you the uh, proposition that we live apart from society is just a ludicrous fallacy it's uh, absolute nonsense we live at peace with all men our lives survive and are vitally progress as, as existing in the mainstream of society. So if you take a simple area like business, for instance, we have uh, non-Bethan suppliers, non-Bethan customers, non-Bethan employers. We, you, we have a lot of interaction with the world. And um, we've got into a, a fight with the Charity Commission, basically, because um, they're saying we're not for the public benefit. And, and, your, of, and your, fight, your fight continues. I'm sorry to cut because we've got to come back to the studio for the fight. I know your fight continues. Patricia, final word to you. You obviously believe Christianity is, is really, you need to evangelise <laughs> and bring people the truth. But I'm just wondering, why does your truth take precedence over anybody else's? Well, because the Catholic Church is, as, as Cardinal Newman said, an, Anglo, an Anglican convert, is the Christian dispensation. That's where authentic Christianity is to be found. Christ said, and is the only religious leader, if you like, who says anything akin to this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to heaven except through me. So even if somebody dies in their, their religion, in non-Christian religion, um, if they are saved, they are saved through the merits of Christ's death. It's a nonsense, a theological nonsense to say, there's, and we don't all believe in the same God. We do, we do, do not believe in the same God. Okay. The, the, this, this thing about we all have the Abrahamic faith. Christ said, before Abraham was, I am. Okay. We don't have any more time. I'm so <laughs> sorry. We're going to have to come back to this. It's been an absolute fascinating yeah. debate. Thank you all yeah. very much, indeed, for your contributions this morning. Thank you. Um, your text and online poll votes are in. We asked, is Stonewall's Bigot of the Year Award inappropriate? Here's what you told us. 52% of you said yes inappropriate 48 percent said no so very close call today uh, perhaps surprisingly right uh, so actually why don't we get reaction because we've got a bit of time just been giving a bit of more time luxury <laughs> so you can respond are you surprised by the relative equality of the poll no I'm not because I think Andrew made some very good points um, and I think what uh, the Cardinal said was unfortunate to put it mildly uh, and, and I'm very angry with him because I feel he does not represent Christianity as I understand it and so part of my anger with him is reflected in, uh, I think, the closeness of that particular vote. So I hope that uh, the Roman Catholic Church will learn that you can't actually treat people who are members of our society with such abuse as Kishwa. this happened. Yeah, well, I just want to take up from this point and link it to what we were discussing earlier about religion being given equal status. Just and I just want to say that it's important that people are treated equally and therefore their religions are also treated as equally as possible. But I want to leave the religions bit out of most of daily life and say that we should emphasize more on other facilities like giving good hospitals, good schooling, uh, good life What we starters. do in society yes, is yes, what I, I think that gives gives yeah. equal status more than just equating one religion with the other. Because thank that's you, diversity. Patricia. I've got to leave it yes. there. I'm very yeah. sorry, but thank you so much this morning for your contributions. And also thanks to you who have taken part today, Bishop Stephen Lowe, Kishwa Desai and Patricia McKeeva and, of course, Andrew Pierce, who was with us earlier. Don't text or call the phone lines anymore. They are now closed. Uh, you can continue the conversation online. Links on the website. I hope you can join us next week. It's been a great day today. Thanks for your company. Bye-bye.